Hey guys, my name is Frank, and this is the Pothum Programming Video Log, part one of the Watch Me Write series that I'm starting to show you guys how to write code from scratch from start to finish. So basically, you're going to watch me write code from scratch. You're going to see things in the browser executed after I write them so you know what the code is doing. And hopefully, it gives you an idea of uh, my workflow and how my programs work a lot better than my other videos where I just review the code. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you my basic setup for how to draw to a canvas. So it's just going to be some basic HTML, JavaScript, and CSS to get a canvas up and running and have something drawn to it. So let's get started with the HTML. Everything's going to be in one single file. So first thing I have to do is just uh, define my doc type. So doc type is going to be HTML. Lowercase HTML is for HTML5. Define my HTML tag. Close it. Do a head tag. And a body tag. And inside of the head tag, we're going to define the title. And that's just going to be Watch Me Write Basics. And I already had this cached because I tried to do this example before, so you already see it up there. But basically, whatever I put in there, if I come in here and just do like that, and save, that's going to refresh my title. So that's the first point where we're actually seeing a change in the browser window. So pretty cool stuff. Now, this next part I'm going to show you is pretty cool. It's a meta tag with the name viewports and the content of width equals device width and this is going to keep our content scaled in terms of resolution across all different kinds of devices so if you've ever been on a mobile phone and you're looking at a, a website designed for desktop and it is really really small and hard to use and the buttons are all super tiny the text is really tiny that's because the resolution for the website does not match the resolution for the device you're on and this meta tag can fix that problem for you so make sure you put that on anything you write because it just is very helpful now i'm going to come in here into the body tag and i'm going to throw a p element in there you say learn some basic html stuff all right there we go see what we got here over on the screen and there we have learned some basic html stuff great so now i'm going to do some styling i'm going to come in here i'm not going to have a separate css file i'm just going to define my style tag inline because it's just some simple stuff that we're doing another thing that i do is i use the asterisk selector to select every element on the page and i give them some basic styles like box sizing border box that's going to make sure all the width and height calculations on my elements include the border and then also margin zero and padding zero just in case the browser tries to add some extra margin or padding to the html element itself a lot of them do and it's a pain especially if you're trying to get a uniform look and feel across all devices with your website or web application get rid of margin and padding it'll help you out uh, then I'm going to get into the HTML selector. And actually, I'm just going to make this a one-liner because we're just talking about width and height here. I'm going to do height 100% width 100%. And I'm going to save. And I'm not going to refresh my browser window yet, but if I come into the elements and I take a look at the HTML tag, this is before I execute my code. Right now, the HTML is only stretching to encompass this P element. And actually, it has quite a bit of margin around that p element or maybe it's padding on the html element but either way i'm going to refresh and now my html element is going to cover the entire screen which is what i want also the body tag i'm going to style that next see how tiny it is right now i'm going to come in here i'm going to do some styling to the body tag body i'm going to actually expand this one height actually i'm not going to do height i'm going to do min height 100 percent and with 100%. Now, min height 100% is going to make this body tag a minimum height of 100% of the HTML tag, which is covering our entire window, visible window. So now the body tag, when I refresh the screen, is going to cover the entire thing. 
And if any of the content I have inside of the body tag goes beyond the bottom of the screen, min height is going to allow it to expand beyond that. And I'm not going to have to have any overflow. It's actually just going to stretch out. The overflow will be underneath the HTML element, but you'll actually be able to scroll to see it. So it's a good way to keep your website expanding, but also have the, the height of your body tag fit the window. So if you have not a lot of content, it does get all scrunched up at the top of the page. So that's some good stuff there. And now I'm going to get into some JavaScript. But first, got to define a canvas tag. So canvas is the HTML5 canvas text or JavaScript. And the HTML5 canvas is where we are going to be doing our drawing. Nope, I spelled it right the first time. Can't talk and type at the same time. This is all improv. So I don't have a script or anything. I'm just kind of going off the top of my head. Uh, anyway, let's get a handle on this, the uh, canvas element that we just defined. So first, I'm going to say alert document dot query selector canvas. And that is going to just print out that canvas tag. So if I come over here and hit refresh, now I have object HTML canvas element. So we actually got a handle on that canvas element inside of our JavaScript code. And this little alert function just pops up uh, an alert box for the user to see. Now, one thing I'm going to do back in the styling is I'm going to add background color. I'm going to make a nice 202830, nice dark gray, kind of bluish background. I'm going to refresh. And there's that background for you. So that's just easier to look at. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the color of all the text. And I'm going to make that white. I'm also going to make font size eh, 1.25 EN. And that's going to make the font a little bit bigger. And the font's going to be white. And it's going to be easier to read. So that's pretty nice. Just makes the page look a little nicer. Nothing special, just some basic CSS. Uh, now I'm going to draw to this canvas, but first I have to get the canvas's context. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to get rid of this alert because we don't really need it. And I'm going to define a variable called context. And if you've messed around with some online tutorials for canvas, a lot of people define a context and a canvas value. You really just need context because... Uh, the context actually has a reference to the parent canvas inside of it. So that context, I can reference the canvas by saying context.canvas. And that's going to literally get the canvas element from the context. So I have access to both the drawing context of the canvas and the canvas itself. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the fill style of the canvas equal to dark green. That's the hex value for kind of a, a mid green. And context.fill rect is going to fill in a specified region of the canvas. In this case, I'm going to fill in the entire canvas by saying context.canvas.width and context.canvas.height. And this is going to fill in the canvas from the 0, 0 position on the top left corner of the canvas to the full width and height of the canvas. And here I am accessing canvas from its very own context. So I'm going to come out here, I'm going to refresh, and now I have a nice green canvas. But I kind of want this stuff to be centered in the screen, so I'm going to have to go back to my CSS for a little bit. So back in the CSS, I'm going to be inside the body selector. I'm going to define the display type of the body tag, and I'm going to, I'm going to make it a grid display. So the grid is awesome because we can very easily center our content with things like justify items center. So if I do justify items center, it should set everything to the center, just like that on the horizontal axis. And then if I want to center it vertically, I come in and I do line content center. Now I'm not really too positive about what the difference between a line content and a line items is or justify items and justify content. But this seems to work combination of align items and justify content centers this if i try to do uh 
excuse me, justify items in a line content. If I try to do justify, let's just look at it, justify content. If I try to do justify content center, this, oh, actually it still works. That's interesting. But my text is no longer centered. It's over to the left there, if you, if you caught that. So align content and justify content center, that will center our stuff in the middle of the screen and that is really nice and it's responsive so i can move my stuff around depending on whatever the screen size is it'll actually change so that's really nice uh, i'm not really sure what align content and align items what the difference is but align content will align the content of whatever element you're defining that css for and it will align it in the center or you could do things like space around which i'm kind of fond of so i'm going to do space around and that's going to put some nice space around these two different elements here and it's still responsive so that's great uh now my p element i'm just going to do let's see p text align center and i'm, I'm probably getting a little bit too much into the styling here but so you guys can just see the process of how I'm doing stuff. Basically, that's how I'm doing stuff. Now, though, now I want my canvas to resize because what if I have a screen that's too small to fit this canvas? I want it to actually resize to fit the canvas so or to fit the screen. So now I'm going to add some code to make my canvas resize when the, the actual browser window re resizes. So I'm going to first define a draw function I'm gonna call it render this function and inside of this I'm gonna drag my drawing code for my canvas cut that paste it right there then I'm going to down here I'm gonna say window dot add event listener resize it's going to add a resize listener to my window and i'm going to hand it the render function and inside of the render function now i'm also going to resize my canvas element so the canvas let's say context dot canvas dot width equals document dot document element dot client with times 0 0.5 so that's going to be 50 percent of the document elements client width so let's take a look at what this code actually does when i refresh the screen and i resize the canvas it's going to draw my canvas at 50 percent of the screen size now you can see that my canvas is stretched out to the 50 percent of the browser window there so pretty cool that's what that resize function does Let's go in and change it so it's 50% of the height as well. So I'm going to go context.canvas.height equals document.documentElement.clientHeight times 0 0.5. And I'm also going to call the render function once after everything is defined. This way it just draws it right away to the screen. Actually, I'm getting an error, client height of undefined. Let's see what that's about. Context.canvas.height equals document dot document oh, typo there. Document element dot client height, and now we can actually see this in action. So now I've got 50% of the height of the window, 50% of the width of the window. For some reason, my canvas is changing colors. That's a little weird. I think it has to do with uh, this, though, possibly. And everything resizes quite nicely. I'm really not sure why it's changing colors. That's a little strange. No idea why that's happening. But that aside, that can be fixed. I'm pretty sure that's just the way things... Uh, maybe there's a flag set that's changing that in my actual browser. Because I know the rendering flags sometimes cause problems with how the canvas is displayed. So it's probably just a problem with my browser's flags and the experimental settings. So don't worry about that too much. This does work. So now let's take a look and see about some other stuff that I may have overlooked. A good thing to note is this, the placement of the script tag. So this script tag is 
purposely defined after this canvas tag. If I take this canvas tag and I cut it out and I paste it after the script tag, the script tag is going to have nothing to reference and it will throw an error. So when I refresh, I'm going to get an error in the console and the error is going to say cannot read property get context of null. It's referring to line 43. If I come to line 43, we can see that we can't get canvas or get we can't call get context on something that is null and what is null is the response of this query selector. Now the reason for that is because when the browser parses your HTML, it does it from top to bottom in order. So it's going to parse this p element, it's going to parse this script, it's going to run the script. It hasn't yet parsed this canvas element because we defined the script before it. So when I try to get this canvas element with the query selector, it's not going to be there. So when you're trying to use JavaScript to manipulate your elements, make sure you put the JavaScript after you define your elements. So that's a good thing to recognize that I'm doing here. Place your script tags at the bottom of your body tag because that will ensure that everything above it has been rendered. So now if I come back out here and I refresh, everything is looking good. So these are just some basic things that I do for all of my Canvas applications. Uh, I like to keep things resizing. I like to keep the CSS very responsive. Uh, definitely go ahead and make sure you put this meta tag in you can add to this meta tag for things like user scaling and stuff like that, but be sure to have this basic meta tag in there to make sure your resolution is uh, set up across all devices to be a, the appropriate resolution for whatever device you're on. Make sure to get rid of margin and padding in your styles because if you don't, some browsers will put margin on the or margin and padding on your HTML element or your body element, and that will throw off your your application if you want to have the same look and feel across all devices. Another great thing to learn is grid box layout. So display grid. You can do awesome things like justify and align your content in the center of the screen. You can define entire grid layouts with this thing and it's really great and really useful. You can do a lot in a very little bit of CSS. And finally make sure that you're placing your script tags in the right spot. And with this little bit of code, I have a very responsive canvas element inside of my browser window, and it's pretty great. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this first installment of Watch Me Write. Uh, in this case, it's Watch Me Write some basic HTML stuff. So hope you guys learned something, and stay tuned for the next video. I'll see you next time.